I need every one of y'all to please do me one huge favor. I need every one of y'all to please share this right now. And after you're shared it, just simply type in the comment section, then I'll share it. I'm going to give you a minute and 15 seconds, you all. Come on, I need y'all to share this, y'all. This world needs to go global, y'all. Come on, come on.
again, I'm a preacher still that you all are here. I don't take it for granted when people take our time in their busy schedule, their busy morning to hear what Pastor T has to say. For that, I say thank you. And for that, I'm appreciative of you all. I'm telling you all, whatever you do, don't log on prematurely. Man, we're about to experience God in an elephantine way. I'm talking about for real, for real, on a serious note. If you believe that today's word is for your neighbor, just type in for your neighbor. So this afternoon is my afternoon. Come on. Just type in for your neighbor. Just type in for your neighbor. This afternoon is for my neighbor. Come on, y'all. Come on. We got we about to unravel some things. We about to unfold. We about to unpack some things. Come on, I'm gonna give you 27 seconds just to type that in. Come on. and even identifying the spirit of dysfunction not knowing that God was going to give me even more so this morning I was up at about 2 o'clock about 3 something my daughter came down here and she said dad what are you doing I said I'm studying to show myself approved and so she laughed and went back upstairs and, and so I've been you know been studying concerning uh, toxicity and even the behavior of uh, dysfunction but it also has to do with us not fitting in so I'm gonna say to you all buckle up uh, because we're about to experience God in an elephantine way we're about to get some revelation we're about to put some identification on some things and some behaviors that we've been trying to figure out but have not figured it out but we're gonna figure it out today so since yesterday God has really been showing me the spirit of toxicity and the dysfunctional spirit he said, Terrence, when you don't identify a spirit, that spirit has the ability to live longer than it should. He continued. He said, they'll never respect you if you keep giving them chance to disrespect you. Let me say that again. He said, that spirit will never respect you if you keep giving it chances after chances to disrespect you. And for that reason alone, this is why when Jesus cast out demons, he always identified demonic influences or the spirit that was ruling or that is ruling. I believe one of the reasons why most churches, businesses, and even relationships are destroyed because we haven't been able to identify the spirit that's been wreaking havoc. Without proper identification, there can be no proper deliverance. Let me say that again. Without any proper identification, there can be no proper deliverance. The toxic spirit can be very draining and very overwhelming. That spirit knows how to drain both your mental and even your emotions. I don't wanna take it for granted that all of us know the meaning of toxic. So I want to first start there. According to Webster, the word toxic, T-O-X-I-C, is described as poisonous. That was the only word in the dictionary that described the word toxic. The, the definition of toxic is poisonous. However, the hallmark of toxic behavior is that it frequently keeps, off, keeps on off balances through its inconsistency by, let me show you how it, it, it's the hallmark of toxic behavior. I'm going to identify it in three in three areas. One is deflecting blame or responsibility. Two, by playing on the goodwill or the guilt of others. Three, or by outright gaslighting, making others feel as if they are the dysfunctional ones. Let me give you that three again on the, the hallmark of toxic behavior. One, by deflecting blame or responsibility. 
Two, by playing on the goodwill or the guilt of others. Three, or by outright gaslighting, making others feel as if they are the dysfunctional ones. Oftentimes, the first step towards dealing with effective with a negative spirit in your life is simply gaining the confidence to call it out and call it what it is, which is toxic. If you allow, if you follow the life of Jesus very carefully, you'll notice that Jesus didn't deal with spirits. And if, he, and if a spirit was in his sphere, Jesus called it out by name. And this is the problem that we're facing in our society today and even in our churches we're keeping spirits alive by brushing them under the rug. I am convinced of this very thing. Without any confrontation, there can be no there can be no solution. Let me say this again. Without any confrontation, there can be no solution. I need about seven people. Remember, you're, you're talking to your neighbor. You're identifying with your neighbor. Just type in for your neighbor. I have to confront it. Come on, just type in for your neighbor. Just type in, I have to confront it. Come on, come on, come on, come on, y'all. Come on, come on. We're getting ready to, come on. This world needs to get to Baghdad. It needs to get to Ukraine. This world needs to get to New York. It needs to get to Utah. But most importantly, it needs to get to your house. Come on. I need y'all to help me spread this word here because we're getting ready to identify this spirit real big. Somebody just type in for your neighbor. I have to confront it. So look at this now. If you follow the life of Jesus, Jesus had a confrontational anointing. And having a confrontational anointing doesn't mean that you're not saved or that you're mean-spirited. It simply means you're not going to play games with the devil and you're not going to allow that spirit to play in your face. Because if you allow that spirit to play in your face without dealing with it, it will grow. And in most cases, if, if, if you're growing and you don't deal with it, that spirit has the ability to duplicate itself and raise up more toxic people in your sphere, which will cause your environment to be uneasy. And the last place you should feel uncomfortable is at a place where you're going to be, where you're going to frequent at all times. The term toxic people comes dangerously close to attaching judgment to individuals and not just the behavior that is exhibited. Toxic is a spirit and not just a behavior. Come on, someone just type that in the comment section. Toxic is a spirit and not just a behavior, which means just because it attaches itself to you or has become a part of your trait and even a part of your character doesn't mean that it's healthy or that it was sent by God. Usually individuals who has toxic behaviors is usually derived from past trauma or underlying mental disorder that cries out for treatment, not harsh condemnation. That is not a rational for ignoring or enduring the effects of a toxic person in your life. It simply is a reminder to safeguard basic human value and your dignity. Even the most challenging people among us, while at the same time learning to protect yourself. How many of us know if you keep allowing the same spirit to attack you, after a while, that spirit is going to think that it's okay to do what it's doing, or that you're okay with its treatment of you. I need somebody just to type again. You're gonna be, a, you're gonna have the pen of a ready writer again today. Just type it, I must confront it. Come on, come on, I need y'all to just to type it again. Just type it, I must confront it. Come on, come on, come on. We're gonna deal with this toxic behavior. We're gonna deal with this dysfunctional spirit because that's hindering you from getting to your next. And that could possibly be the reason why some of us can't fit in. Come on. Come on, I need everyone just to type in, I must confront it. Look at this. When you're dealing with the spirit of toxicity, you have to recognize it and even acknowledge that you have a problem with it. Because if you don't recognize it or even call it out on the carpet, that spirit will dominate you, that spirit will intimidate you, and even that spirit will even manipulate you. And when that happens, the only person that will suffer will be you. Not only will you suffer when you don't deal with that toxic behavior, your peace is compromised, 
your happiness is compromised and even your joy is compromised. There's nothing worse than coming home or even worshiping with that spirit, knowing you have to deal with that spirit. But what's worse than that is, that spirit know that it is toxic. And because many people have ignored that spirit, didn't call that spirit out, that spirit now has become a part of their expression. So in other words, because it has been expressed as its characteristic as an individual, now we, now we equated it to, that's just who they are. No, you have to call that behavior out. I need seven people. Please, y'all, just type in, call it out. Come on, seven people, please, just type in, call it out. <clears throat> Come on, just type in, call it out, y'all. Come on, what are we here for today? Just type in, call it out. Look at these three things, these five things that I when you call it out. No healthy relationship will cause you to feel. I need y'all to be typing real fast because I'm getting ready to tell you five things that is no relationship should cause you to feel this way. Look at this now. One, no relationship should cause you to feel physically or emotionally drained after spending time together. That's number one. Let me repeat it again. No healthy relationship should cause you to feel one, physically or emotionally drained after spending time together. Number two, you shouldn't feel reduced in confidence in yourself or enjoyment of your life when you're hanging around toxic people. Number three, you shouldn't feel guilty for not doing more to solve their problems. Number four, you're confused about the boundaries or the belief that you have set in place because of the toxic spirit now makes you feel bad about their behavior and because you're uncomfortable with their actions and their behavior, now that spirit wanna make you think that you are abnormal because you, you're making a stance. Number five, you shouldn't feel frustrated that your needs, your thoughts, and your feelings don't matter. I need about seven people. I told y'all we're going to do a lot of typing today. Seven people. You're not typing for yourself today. You're typing for your neighbor. So seven people just type in God wants me free. Come on. Seven people just type in God wants me free. Come on. Seven people just type in God wants me free. As a matter of truth, God wants us so healthy. He wants us prosperous and at peace. And if those three things are compromised, it's time to reevaluate the relationship. Third John 2 said, I wish above all that thou prosper, be in good health, even as thy soul prosper. There are three components in that passage of scripture that the writer is conveying to us. He said, I wish above all that you prosper. So in other words, he wants you to prosper in your health. He wants you to prosper financially. And he wants you to prosper in your relationship. So if those three things are compromised, your health, your finances, and in relationship are compromised, then there's a great chance that you're not going to live a happy life. You're not going to live a joyful life because your atmosphere has been compromised to so to the point that now you can't live because someone is dictating how you should live. I don't care how long you've been together, how long you've been in a relationship, your peace, your happiness, your joy comes first. Let me say that again. I don't care how long you've been in any form of relationship, your peace, your happiness, your joy comes first. And if those things are compromised, then the relationship needs to be reevaluated or the individual of the spirit must be called out. The reason why most of us don't feel like we should call things out or people out because we think that it's not spiritual. We think that it's not godly. Man, you must have not read your Bible because if you would have read your Bible, you would have found out and would have read that Jesus was very confrontational. Jesus didn't care about hurting people's feelings. He called Peter, he called Peter Satan. As a matter of fact, Jesus got so, so, so graphic that he called him vapors. You don't get no worse than calling someone a vapor. He said, you vipers? He called them vipers. He, he called them Satan. I'm saying, man, Jesus, he, 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 sometimes Jesus just, I said to myself, man, Jesus just, uh, he, he was a gangster. 
that's what I said. That's the conclusion I came up with Jesus. He was a gangster because Jesus didn't care about your feelings because Jesus understood I'm not dealing with feelings, I'm dealing with spirits. And see, that's the problem that most of us are having right now. We are afraid to confront people because we're afraid that we're going to hurt their feelings. You're not dealing with their feelings, you're dealing with their spirit. For the Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood. So in other words, that lets me know that I'm not going to ever confront a, a, a person. I'm going to confront the spirit that's operating in a person. And see, this is the reason why most of us don't see results. Because most of us, we're confronting people, but we're not confronting the spirit that was in them. What did the Bible say when Jesus, when they was getting ready to sell this ever, when, they was, when, when someone tried to, tried to cast them out, they said, Paul we know, Jesus we know, but who are you? So in other words, demons recognize not only the authority in your life, but Jesus, but demons even recognize the power that you possess. And see, that's the problem. The reason why most of us are not being successful and we keep dealing with toxic people and dysfunctional people because we're dealing with them. We're cussing people out. We're getting them told. We're making them Facebook statuses. We're doing a whole lot of things that is causing what we call counterattacks. But instead of dealing with the person, you got to address the spirit. I need about seven people you ain't typing for yourself but type for your neighbor just type it I must address the spirit I know some of y'all saying come on seven people hurry up just type it I must address the spirit come on y'all come on come on come on come on you've been addressing people for the longest you can't address people you got to address the spirit for the weapons of our warfare they're not carnal so in other words they're not fleshly you got to deal with the spirit come on somebody just type in I got to I got to deal with the spirit Come on, come on, come on, y'all. Come on, come on, y'all. We're going somewhere today. We're going somewhere today. Just type it. I'm going to confront the spirit. You must address the spirit. So, so, anything that's been disturbing my peace, anything that's compromising my joy and my peace, I, I'm not going to let it, I'm not going to let them feel comfortable. You're not going to feel comfortable knowing that you have interrupted my sleep, interrupted my joy. As a matter of fact, according to Matthew chapter number 26, verse number 53, I have legions of angels that are assigned to me. And because I have legions of angels assigned to me, which mathematically speaking, I got 72,000 angels that are assigned to Terrence, Dexter, Hazard, Senior. So what I'm going to do is, instead of me worrying all night on how you interrupted disrupted my peace. I'm going to dispatch me a legion of angels to go to your house to interrupt your sleep, to disturb you, to make you feel like, man, you're not going to be comfortable in my presence or you're not going to have a good night's rest because you are interrupting my peace. And so what I'm going to do, angels go on assignment, now disturb them because they have disturbed me. And so in the meantime, you're going to be disturbed because I have now did things in order. I'm not going to stay up all night doing something that I got angels to do. Now let's unpack this spirit for a moment. And let's disguise its display. Let's disguise this right now. Come on. Are y'all there with me? Come on, y'all. Come on. Come on. I ain't been on here for 30 minutes, y'all. Come on. Look at this now. Let's talk about the characteristics of a toxic person. Number one, and I know I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to finish this tomorrow. A toxic spirit is a deceiver. Come on, I need someone to please put that in the comment section. A toxic spirit is a deceiver. Come on, someone just put that in there. A toxic spirit is a deceiver. So look at this now. Let's talk about the deceiver for a moment. Whenever you're dealing with a deceiver, you're dealing with a liar. And whenever you're dealing with a liar, you're dealing with someone or the spirit that can never be trusted. As a matter of fact, the Bible records, I need y'all to write this scripture down. The Bible records in Psalms 101 verses 7 through 8. Someone please put this, put this scripture in the comment section. Psalms 101 verses 7 through 8. Look at what the word of God talks about a deceiver. It says, he that worketh. If you notice in the word worketh in the, in the King James Version is TH, which means it's a continuation. TH, whenever you see it in the King James Version, it's a continuation. It says, he that worketh deceit shall not dwell within my house. This is God speaking, the writer. God is speaking through the writer. He says, he that telleth the lies 
He that telleth lies shall not tarry in my sight. Verse number eight. He says, I will early destroy all the wicked of the land that I may cut off all the wicked doors from the city of the Lord. So here you have the writer making a strong food. He's speaking on behalf of God. He's making a strong statement in saying that a liar won't even tarry in his sight. So in other words, what God is saying, he won't even have time to even have a conversation with a liar because he already know that he's going to lie while he's trying to have a conversation with him. So in other words, Jesus is saying, I ain't got time to hear your excuses. You show me who you were. You show me who you are. Go straight to hell and do not pass go. So, 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 so in other words, Jesus is not going to even toy you with that spirit on the day of judgment. And when you're dealing with a deceiver, you have to understand that they are a compulsive liar. And a compulsive liar has one mission. And that's deceive you into making you think that the representative that they're representing to you is real. But at the end of the day, they'll never change, especially if they're not seeking deliverance. And in most cases, because their spirit has been like that for a long time, it has now convinced itself that their behavior is acceptable. How many of you have ever heard some people say this about certain people that got toxic traits, toxic characteristics? Oh, that's just who they are. They've been like this for a long time. So in other words, we have succumbed to accepting that that behavior is okay. No, 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 no. You cannot just allow people just to get around here being mean-spirited. You can't allow people to get around here just acting like acting like 10 wild dogs and, and sum it down and say they're just who they are. At some point, you got to have a confrontational anointing to know how to deal with that spirit. A deceiver, watch this now, a deceiver, deceiver lies destroys a crucial component of any relationship which is trust. So when the trust is broken, my God, when the trust has been broken in any form of relationship, I'm not saying that it's, it, it can't be restored, but when you have broken someone's trust with your toxic behavior, and especially when you have not repented, have not acknowledged it, that relationship will never ever return back to its original place. Because the 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 the, the the, the, the victim, I mean, uh, the, the, the predator think that because this is who they are or because they've been operating like this for a long time, that it's okay. That relationship will never be what God has intended for it to be. Once you catch wind, look at this now. Once you catch wind of deceit with a deceiver, look out. Come on, I want to expose that spirit. Once you catch wind, of a deceit of a deceiver look out their mission is to now make your life hell why because now you've called them out and in most cases when you call out someone's spirit they usually hook up with spirits that are kindred <laughs> can i say that again once you start calling demonic spirits out usually that spirit likes to now gather other spirits that are similar to them. Now you have to remember, those spirits didn't like each other because guess what? Two strong spirits can't get along. But once you start calling that demon out, now that demon now goes back to the demon that left your sphere and now they become B of F. Why do now they become B of F? Because now spirits recognize spirits. So in other words, they understand this in this, in this aspect. United we stand, divided we fall. So now their job is now to make your life a living hell. But what you don't understand is, can't a devil make your life a living hell? They ain't got that kind of authority to make your life a living hell. And the reason why they're making your life a living hell is because you don't know the power that you possess. Jesus, I've given you authority to tread on scorpions and scorpions. And if you drink anything deadly, it will not harm you. For the Bible says, he says, he says, miracle signs and wonders shall follow them that believe. So in other words, I got the power to cast out demons. 
and I ain't got to toy with them. Jesus never toyed with demons. You never read in your entire Bible that Jesus spent five or six days toiling with a demon. No, no, no. As a matter of truth, the Bible says in that same hour, that spirit came out. But the reason why many of us are not seeing results in, in, in toxic behavior people is because we're toiling with it. We're playing patty cake with it. You got to call it out. I need about seven people. Hurry up. Please, let's type in confront it. Come on, come on, come on, y'all. Come on. Just type in confront it. Come on, just type in I must confront it. Come on, y'all. Come on, come on. Man, I feel God real strong. I feel God real strong, real strong. So look at this now. Come on, come on. Just type in confront it. Now look at this now. It could be an isolated incident or a half truth. I'm dealing with toxicity. I'm dealing with the spirit of toxicity. And I'm dealing with a deceiver. I'm still dealing with the deceiver. I'm, I'm, I'm helping you identify the spirit. So when you see it in someone, you're gonna know how to you want you're gonna you're gonna to know how to confront it. It could be an isolated incident or a half truth that might be forgiven and even forgotten. But usually it's a sign of trouble. Let me say that again. It could be maybe one or two incidents or someone told half truth that you possibly could forgive and even forget. But usually it's a sign of trouble. When a person feels the need to constantly lie to you, in essence, what it's telling you in their action is that, and that is who you get involved with and it's not going to change, especially if deliverance is their measure and their portion. It may indicate serious insecurity lack of integrity or flimsy moral standards if dishonesty i'm dealing with a deceiver if dishonesty show up in a relationship once i need y'all to hear this if dishonesty shows up in a relationship once it will likely show up again let me say that again i'm talking about an undelivered toxic behavior if dishonesty show up once in a relationship, it will likely show up again. Here's a sobering fact of life. Here's a sobering fact of life. If someone is willing to lie to you once, they will likely lie to you again. Let me say that again. If someone is willing to lie to you once, they will lie to you again. The reason why they lie to you again because of one of one of few things is because there has not been no accountability set up in place. I don't care how much you love them. If they have betrayed your trust, you, they have to earn your trust. Trust is not given, trust is earned. And you have every right, if someone has broken your trust, you have every right to hold that individual accountable for how they mishandled you, usually, Usually when a person is not willing to change And you giving them another chance to prove themselves right When they have not changed And you're holding them accountable They become frustrated They become frustrated And saying you know what I don't have to deal with this Hold on You're the one that broke the trust So you should have more than enough time If this relationship is worth it being involved with or this relationship is worth us remaining together. Don't put a timetable on my healing. Don't put a timetable on my deliverance. You scarred me. Now you have to prove to me that you are saved, especially if you feel like it's worth it. Well, you've been, uh, well, I've been, I've been accounting for the last three days. Three days, really? Well, you've been out here bogus for the last three years. So you got to learn to sit in it. Look at your neighbor. Look type for your neighbor. Learn to sit in it. Come on. Just you type it for your neighbor. Just type and learn to sit in it. Come on. I'm still dealing with a deceiver. Just type that in. Learn to sit in it. Come on. Come on. Come on, y'all. Come on. Come on. Don't put a timetable on my deliverance. For real. So look at this now. People who are willing to lie in one situation. Or with one person will find it easier to lie to another context. A person who shades the truth with others will be inclined to be dishonest with you as well. A liar 
rarely appears out of nowhere. Let me say that again. A liar rarely appears out of nowhere. It's a part of a larger deceptive context. If someone is dishonest, you naturally wonder about their ulterior motive. If you feel closed out to certain aspects of a person's life, you have to wonder what's behind those seal off areas. Usually a deceiver, a liar who is unrepentant, usually are a person who has a lot of secrets. Secrets arouse suspicion. Someone please put that in the comment section. Secrets arouse suspicion. Come on, please put that in the comment section. Secrets arouse suspicion and oftentimes for a good reason. A person who tells lies must work hard to keep track of what they have said and to whom they said it to. Come on, somebody just type for your neighbor. Just type in, just tell the truth. Come on, just type in, just tell the truth. Come on, just type in, just tell the truth. When the details of a story don't add up, Come on, some of y'all, you've been saying, these, these details don't add up. You're not too far off the rockets, especially if you're in the spirit. When the details of a story don't add up or keep changing over time, it may be a sign that you're not getting the truth. Here's the truth about a deceiver. They create mistrust, chaos, and even uncertainties. Now, tomorrow, I'm going to deal with this part. I'm going to deal with identifying a control freak. The control freak of a toxic person. I'm going to deal with that on tomorrow. I'm going to deal with the spirit of control. Someone who always wants to control. The spirit of Jezebel. I'm going to deal with that on tomorrow. But let me just go a little bit further. We're at halftime, y'all. Give me a few more minutes. We're at halftime. I need this pause right here. I need y'all. I know you may have shared it once, but I need y'all to share it again. Come on, I'm going to give you 93 seconds to share it one more time. Come on, gonna, come on, just share it. After you share it, just type in, I share it again. Come on. And after this, I'm going to probably about 15 more minutes because I want to unpack a few more other things. Come on. You may have shared it once, but share it again, y'all. Come on, come on. Father, we thank you for this short breath in our love. Yeah, 93 seconds. Come on. Thank you for this amazing opportunity just to pour out our worship to a God that loves us, to a God who Just type in unaliving. 
allow me to say this. If you're going to experience a metamorphosis in your life, we need to understand that intense warfare is inevitable. As we've always heard, that something worth having is worth fighting for. And that's the same frame of mind we must have concerning our deliverance and even our inner healing. You have to understand when changes is inevitable, you have to prepare yourself mentally that you're going to experience some sleepless nights, possibly. When change is inevitable, you have to understand you're going to experience some withdrawals, especially if you're in a relationship or even a friendship with anyone and, and this thing has unraveled your peace, has unraveled your sleep, and you know you must confront it. There's going to be some chances that your sleep is going to be disturbed because no one wants to really confront someone that you really love. But it's necessary to confront them in order for the relationship to be healthy. Now, if you want to continue in, in being hurt, being wounded, walking on eggshells in a friendship or a relationship, then it's okay. But how many of us know that you're not really your organic self, you're not really your real self, if you got to walk on eggshells in a relationship or even a friendship? When changes is inevitable, you have to understand you're going to experience some intense battles in your mind. But at the end of the day, it's all about how bad do you want it. Again, many of us, we won't change, but we won't change with limitations. And many of you all, you've gone through in the course of years, is layers to your deliverance and even your inner healing. And just like an onion, many of us, we have layers of dysfunctions that is attached to us. Many of us, we have layers of rejection, we have layers of hurt, we have layers of letdowns. For many of y'all, the process may take longer for you than it may take longer for your neighbor. Let me prove my point. Let me give y'all, y'all know I like to give y'all real life applications, right? Last year, uh, I was celebrating my birthday and um, I consider myself a landscaper. Never landscaped a day in my life, but I just figured, oh, let me just let me just save myself some money. So uh, I started landscaping. I started uh, uh, buying, I'm not going to say unnecessary uh, tools and unnecessary uh, product, but uh, it was unnecessary to me. So I was watering around my grass and I found myself getting frustrated because I'm, I'm not understanding for the life of me why my grass isn't growing the way that the bag said it would grow. I brought a fertilizer bag. The fertilizer bag said that it's going to take uh, seven days for the grass to grow, even dead grass. Now again, I did everything that the instruction instructed me, right? I did everything that was on the bag. I watered the grass three times a day and they told me I'm gonna see results in seven days. So I brought some seeds and some fertilizers. And on the bag it said it's guaranteed to grow within the next seven days. And the only thing I need to do is water it, lay the fertilizer down, and it should the results in seven days. Thank you, my boy Paris, man. I absolutely love you, man. Now, 14 days later, now must I remind you, the bag said seven days. I'm now in day 14. I don't see the grass growing. All I see is muddy waters. So in the midst of my frustration, I sat down in my chair and God began now to minister to me because God sees that I'm, I'm wasting my time. I'm not an expert in this, in this, in this particular area. So God begins to minister, minister to me about this grass growing thing. He said, Terrence, this is not just for me, but this is for about eight of you all right here. If you're one of the eight, just type it, I need to hear this. Come on. If you're one of the eight, just type it, I need to hear this. Come on, come on, come on, y'all. Y'all need to hear this, y'all. This is what God gave me. I done wasted 14 days. Of un I wasted 14 unnecessary days. But this is the revelation that God gave me. And I'm talking about eight of y'all right here. So, so this, you need to hear this part here. Watch this now. So God speaks to me. He said, Terrence, you know one of the reasons why your grass isn't growing is because the place where you're trying to make it grow has been dead for years. So he said, you wanted to see a miracle overnight, but this thing has been like this even before you moved here. So in other words, it's a stubborn place. 
that you're trying to make happen overnight. Ooh, some of us, we're trying to change people that don't want to be changed. We're trying to change people who've been like this all their life. Yes, they go to church, they speak in tongues, they preach the word of God, but they've been like this all their life. But we feel like because we're praying now, that it's going to happen overnight. Some spirits are okay with being who they are. So in other words, what did, what, what did they say uh, when Jesus was getting ready to confront a demon? They said, uh, leave us alone. Uh, we have nothing to do with you. But we ain't bothering you. So in other words, some demons are okay with where they are. Some people are okay with their bad behavior. Some people are, have become married to their, to their spirits. And because they have now become married to it, they think that their behavior is okay. It's not okay to cuss people out. It's not okay to have a bad day every day. Yes, I know all of us may have, we're going to have some bad days, but every day you got a bad day. Every day you got to walk around with a snake face. Every day you got to walk around here like we got to walk on cotton. Where is your Holy Ghost at some point? When does the Holy Ghost show up? Well, don't mess with, don't mess with Jim. Jim don't play. Don't mess with Shanae. Shanae don't play. And Shanae just got through speaking in tongues, casting out demon, prophesying. But when service over with, we can't, we can't say, hey, how you doing, Shanae? That's a spirit that has now become one with each other. And we have tolerated. We have now become one with it because we're afraid to confront it. But God spoke to me. He said, Terrence, Faith World Family Worship Center is growing by leaps and bounds. I told y'all in the last, in this, just this year alone, close to 200 people have given their life to Christ. 200 people haven't been to church. I ain't got nothing to do with it. 200 people have given their life to Christ in our church up to the day this right to this day. And God says, Terrence, I'm getting ready. I'm supernaturally growing your church by leaps and bounds. He said, but the foundation of this ministry must be built on righteousness, holiness, and love. But in order for it to be built on righteousness, holiness, and love, you got to confront the spirits that are living inside the, this inside this, this this inside. So it means that when you see a thing, you just can't shout over it. You got to confront it. So in other words, you just can't speak in tongues over it. You got to confront it. Because if you don't confront it, it's just like the Bible said, let the wheat and the tail grow together. Jesus is going to do the separation. So in other words, this is what I'm doing now in this season. The wheat and tail have grown together. And now God said, now it's time to confront it. And when you confront it, you're going to see who's really for you and who's really against you. Because if they're really for you and you call these spirits out, they're going to seek deliverance. But if they have now become married to their spirits and married to that demon and you confront them, they get an attitude and leave. That means that they will never be for you. That means that they were a part of the tail group. <laughs> so he said to me, secondly, the reason why you're not seeing results because this is not your expertise. Because you know nothing about growing grass. One form of treatment isn't going to cut it. So he said, what you need to do is call professionals or the people that are cutting your grass on a regular basis. You need to give them your vision and allow them to do what they've been called to do. So God said, so it is in the natural, so it is in the spirit. Many of my people are not getting properly healed because they're self-diagnosing their situation. And as a result of self-diagnosing their situation, now there's a strong spirit of frustration that has set in. And whenever the spirit of frustration has set in, the next thing we try to do is help our situation by putting our own touches to it. And this is what many of us fail to realize and that is the and the way that you are didn't just happen overnight many of us we have layers of rejection that's attached to us many of us we have layers of hurt that is attached to us many of us we have layers of betrayal that is attached to us many of us we have layers of letdowns that are attached to us so in other words it wasn't just one person who hurt us in our lifetime no 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 
it was probably multiple people who did it. It wasn't just one person who betrayed you. It was probably multiple people who betrayed you. It wasn't just one person who abused you, whether it was physically, emotionally, spiritually, financially. It all fell in the same category of abuse. It wasn't just one person who lied to you or let you down. It was probably multiple people that let you down. Now, the flip side of that corner, it probably was the one who did it on a magnified level that no one else had did it, but it still was painful, felt in the same category of your other layers. So can you imagine, oh God, so can you imagine the pain that multiple people did to you and it was that one person who took it to another level. Everybody else did the same thing, but this one person took your pain to another level that you thought that could never happen. So what is that called? I'm going to finish this tomorrow because I, I said I went, I went past my time. And I don't want to be on here all day because I want to make sure y'all come back tomorrow. So what is that called when multiple people have scarred you, have wounded you, but it was that last person who wounded you the worst or the most? Can I tell you what is that called? It's called piled up hurt. Can I tell you again what is it called? It's called piled up hurt. It's called piled up rejection. It's called piled up abandonment. It's called piled up isolation. It's called piled up betrayal. It's called piled up distrust. It's called piled up letdown. So you mean to tell me you have all of these things going on within your soulish man, your soulish realm, and because it's a new day, and all of a sudden things that has happened to you for a lifetime is now gone away, I need about seven people just to put this in the comment section. Just type in, it's a process. Come on, seven people, just type in, it's a process. Come on, come on, just type in, it's a process. Come on, come on, just type in, it's a process. Come on, come on. Come on, I need about seven people. Just type in, it's a process. Come on, just type in, it's a process. So look at this. It's a process. This is not a contradiction, but it's a contrast. Yes, God can do it overnight. Yes, God can heal you overnight. God can heal you without the evidence that you've ever been scarred. He can do that. You can be healed. You can be delivered. And you can even be set free. And see, this is the problem that the churches don't talk about. And I believe it's because the church don't understand this part of deliverance. Deliverance is the beginning stages of your process. And again, deliverance is the beginning stage of your process. However, this is the problem that this is the this is the part that we don't talk about. Uh, I believe that the church has become ignorant. Yes, I went through deliverance. I slain snot. I, I rolled on the floor. I burped. I farted. I did all those things in my deliverance. But this is the part that I did not continue. And that is at the deliverance. Now that needs to be called inner healing. Inner healing is a process that has to be nurtured, treated, and it requires daily detoxing. Why did Paul say kill that flesh daily. So in other words, Paul said, if I'm going to maintain my deliverance, if I'm going to maintain my healing, if I'm going to maintain anything that has wounded me, I have to daily destroy it. Inner healing requires daily watering and washing of God's word if you're going to remain healed. And I am done for today. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'll finish this tomorrow. Listen here. Look at this. So, so, so. If you enjoyed this message, just type in, I enjoyed it, Pastor T. Come on. If you enjoyed it, just type in, I enjoyed it. Come on. If you enjoyed it, just type in, I enjoyed it. Come on. If you enjoyed it, just type in, I enjoyed it. If you enjoyed it, just type in, I enjoyed it. Hallelujah. Now, if this 
message was a blessing to you. If you enjoyed this message and you, and you feel led to sow a seed, I need every one of y'all that are watching me right now. Every one of y'all, please sow. I'm asking everyone that's watching me right now, sow $25. Cash app is dollar sign TDH Ministries 721. If you're going to do Zelle, it is another chance ministries 12 at gmail.com. Every one of y'all that enjoyed this message, even those of y'all that are watching the replay, I dare you right now to sow $25 right now. Cash app is dollar sign TDH Ministries 721. Zelle, another chance ministries 12 at gmail.com. If this message was a blessing to you, why don't you sow a seed? When you can't pay for the gospel, but I'm telling you, it's okay to sow. You're sowing on good ground. You're sowing on God's ground. You're sowing on grounds that reproduce results. Amen? Come on, sit up the thumbs, sit up the hearts. I dare you to sow. I double dog dare you to sow. I double dog dare you to sow. My son Jeff gave a powerful testimony on Sunday about when he sold, what took place when he sold. I'm telling you, the ability, the ability to sow has benefits. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, my brother Paris. You have an even greater seed to sow. Thank you, man. I appreciate it, man. I love you, man. Hallelujah. Thank you, man. I love you, man. That's my brother for a long time. We grew up like brothers. It's my brother. Thank you so much, man. Come on, sit up the thumbs, sit up the hearts. At the end of the day, can't nobody do me. You're going to cash out. It's directed to me. TDH Ministries 721. Cash app. Another Chance Ministries 12 at gmail.com. Amen. I'm done, you all. I love y'all. If y'all going to meet me here tomorrow, just type in, I'll see you tomorrow, Pastor T. Come on. If you're going to see me tomorrow, just say, I'll see you tomorrow, Pastor T. Hold yourself accountable. Because we're going to deal with tomorrow. We're going to deal with some inner healing. And we're going to deal with the control for tomorrow. different make this new year's eve i mean really good this year again we haven't uh, our theme is new year is, is coming to america is at the holiday country in uh countryside uh hotel uh put the address in there where are you gonna get a five course meal i believe it's five course meal for 60 for 85 65 or 85 dollars i don't know all the details inbox the inbox either tasha or crystal or Pat Sabrina for more details. But you're going to have a phenomenal time. Your children are welcome. Your teenagers are welcome. Inbox Tasha, Tasha Haynes for tickets. I'm t it's only $85. Well, you, you can't beat that with a bag. $85, five-course meal. Then we got hotel rooms. If you're going to book the hotel, you need to book it now because the hotel is almost sold out. For New Year's Eve, $85? That's a steal. And guess what? We're not even making a profit off of it. We just want to enjoy each other. We want to do something different. 
Every year we do the same thing, but we're going to do something different. Children under 12 are only $35. Thank you, Paris. You in the entertainment field. You deal with millionaires. So you know that $85 ain't nothing. He said, no, you can't. He literally had millionaires in his, in his vehicle. He has his own company. My friend Paris has his own company. Take millionaires, billionaires across the city of Chicago and even throughout the world. You can't beat $85 nowhere. Five course meal, get dressed up, gonna have entertainment. Again, that night, I listen, I'm gonna have so much fun. I'm a househead. So my favorite song is, I heard you say. So when, I, when that song come on, I'm good. You gonna lose me. So again, $85, make plans now to join Pastor T. You gonna be glad that you did. And if you're coming in on the tail end, I see my daughter Larissa just logged on, but I'm telling you, watch this live again. What hotel to use the code? The hotel code is ACM. That's the code, ACM. That's the code. Apostle Gina Whitehead, she gonna tell you, she, matter of fact, I think she, Apostle Gina Whitehead already reserved a table already. She she was there last year. She can tell you that it is so much fun. So, so, so she can tell you, yeah. Apostle, just tell them how much how much fun it is. We have so much fun, so much games. The children have more fun than us. Again, I'm a house head. Pastor Brenna is a stepper. And, 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 and see, the only time I'm going to leave the floor is when they play little dirt. Oh, my life. My grandbaby going to be there with me, too. So when you, when you, when you hear that, the, I, I, I leave the floor. But again, we're going to do something different. Amen? We love y'all. What's the name of the hotel? The hotel is Countryside. Holiday Inn Countryside. Oh, Pastor Brenda said she got her tickets. Wow, wow. Apostle Gina Whitehead already got her tickets. Almost a table. Amen. Yes. She said, yes, we went there. It was up. Okay, it sounds great. I love y'all. Y'all be blessed. I'm out of here, y'all. God's been good to us. What a word today. What a word. I'm coming back tomorrow. I'm going to deal with control freaks, and I'm going to deal with inner healing. I don't know why God got me doing this every day, but I'm going there. Amen. Somebody, Yolanda Salard said, inbox of the information, the details. Tasha, take care of that puppy. Raise it. Yes, heaven and earth adore. Angels bow before. Yes, God. Set up the thumbs, set up the hearts. What a mighty God. What a mighty God we serve. Yes, what a mighty God. Yeah. We serve. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We serve. Yeah, 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 yeah. Paris, I love you, man. We got to kick it, man.